Yeah, in fact, when we wrote Lifespan, there was almost no data on this. But now we know actually that one of the huge benefits you get from being cold is the production of brown fat. So what, what is brown fat? Brown fat, or in, often called beige fat, is found in babies. Uh, it's typically to allow them to stay warm because they don't shiver until they're about one year of age. And what was discovered about 10 years ago at Harvard uh, by Bruce Spiegelman and Ron Kahn, a couple of my colleagues, is that adults also have some brown fat. And they discovered this with, with PET scanning. And they found that it mostly exists uh, on your back, uh, in your shoulder blades. And when you get cold, it revs up. Uh, you get more of this brown fat. And this is a good thing because brown fat is extremely healthy. It revs up metabolism. It burns white fat. And we think that there are these factors, little chemicals, little proteins that get secreted out of brown fat that make the rest of the body healthy as well. One of the reasons we know that is because there's a, a gene that makes brown fat, makes cells turn brown from white to beige to brown, and it's called PRDM16. And mice that lack this gene, they don't have brown fat, but they also develop type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease as a result. We had these dwarf mice that uh, Mike Bonkowski, who was working in my lab, uh, he was the guy that generated the longest lived mouse. He called it Yoda. And it was l very long lived because it had a mutation in a gene for the growth hormone receptor, which means they were small and dwarfs. And these little small dwarf mice would live up to three times longer than a normal mouse. It was quite an amazing thing. And the field was rejoicing. Wow, we figured out how to make mammals live that much longer. And then it was noticed that they were shivering, little cold mice. And so the, the researchers thought, we'll just give them friends. They didn't have a companion. You know, mice like to live not solitary, but with other mice. Um, and so they gave them a buddy. Each of these dwarfs had a buddy. And then the majority of the lifespan extension went away, which is super disappointing, right? But what it told us was that a large effect of longevity was due to them being cold. Yeah, well, the, the trick is, let's go back to the brown fat. What brown fat has a lot of is mitochondria. And within those mitochondria, uh, they're actually quite different. They have high levels of proteins called UCPs or uncoupling proteins, which insert into the membrane of the mitochondria and allow those protons that were built up uh, to leak through. Instead of going through that pump that makes the energy, they leak through. Why is that interesting? Well, first of all, that generates heat. That helps the animal and we survive cold. But also you get fewer free radicals produced when you uncouple mitochondria with these proteins. And consistent with that, if you make an animal, let's say it's a, a worm or a fly or even a mouse that has high levels of these UCP genes, they actually live longer. So uncoupling and reducing that free radical load, and you can do this with cold therapy, we think, is beneficial to health. Yeah, Joe said, uh, let's go do that after the show, which I did. Um, it was pretty chilly. I had to strip down into my down to my underwear and put gloves on and socks and whatever. But um, I, you get to play music at least. Uh, I got to choose Help by the Beatles, which was quite appropriate because by the end of those three minutes, well, the first two minutes, I'm like, what's the problem? This isn't cold. But that last minute, I really thought I was going to get hypothermia and my ears might break off. You're chattering and shaking. Yeah, you really yeah. start to, to shiver, which is your body's way of generating heat by moving your muscles. Uh, but it was, it was really enjoyable. I found afterwards I felt stimulated. Um, I felt lucky to be alive. And I felt good for a number of days afterwards, which is probably because my mitochondria were revved up and I was building more brown fat. The, the one thing I think it's worth pausing here to talk about is why would you do this now? Why don't you wait till you're old to do cold therapy? Mm. And what's been found, at least in mice, is that old mice don't make brown fat as well as young mice. So what you want to do is middle age, do these treatments um, and so that you're ready for old age when it becomes harder. Though it's never too late. We do find that yeah. things work in elderly mice and elderly people, but it doesn't work as well if you start midlife or even earlier. And our bodies recognize that. We've got those genes that respond and they keep us healthy as we've talked about. So there are a number of ways you can, if you don't have a cryotherapy center near you, what do you do? Well, you can take cold showers. Some people do that. I don't, I find that unpleasant, but you can do that. It's very cheap to do that. Um, or you can do something that I do actually do, which is sleep with very few covers on my bed and lower down my body temperature. And that's also been shown to activate these uncoupling proteins and build brown fat. Taking your body out of its comfort zone. And so the-, the All of these things are about taking your body out of its comfort they zone, are. right? Yeah. They are, and some of them are really enjoyable. I think sauna bathing is cold in Europe is super enjoyable. Um, and it also is good for your skin. You get to sweat and get get those pores unclogged. 
But this is one of the most ancient thera therapies for longevity. Uh, even before Roman times, they were bathing uh, in these saunas, though the Romans would use fires under the, under the floor. But this is something that Europeans still carry on as a tradition, particularly in Finland and other Scandinavian countries, where these studies are typically performed uh, on men for some reason. But the data that I've looked at, which we'll put the show in the show notes, is that there's absolutely no doubt that men who partake in sauna bathing a few times a week, often at home, because they build this into their houses, have a dramatic reduction up to 20% in the rate of cardiovascular disease and mortality caused by heart attacks. On here, right? It's different in this case. What we think goes on in a sauna is you're activating HSPs. And these heat shock proteins are helping to fold proteins correctly and also stimulate pathways that are beneficial, such as building new blood vessels, making more mitochondria. And one of the reasons that I believe it's true is that in model organisms, if take a worm, if you turn up heat shock proteins, um, either by giving them a lot of heat or genetically modifying them, they also live longer. I haven't seen any evidence that it's negative. Um, and I used to, before the, the pandemic, I used to go at least once a week and, and do multiple bouts of the heat shock in the sauna for about 15 minutes and then jump in an ice bath, which was nearby for four minutes and then cycle that. Uh, but yeah, it can put some stress on the, on the body, certainly on the heart. But yeah, the idea though is to shock the body, heat, cold, heat, cold. And that way, you have, I think you get the maximum benefit from these adversity mimetics. There are a variety of different saunas. There's the old fashioned type, which is the cedar planks sitting in there and uh, you just throw water on hot rocks. That's traditional. There are new ones such as infrared saunas and the infrared light actually penetrates the skin and is thought, and there's some evidence, a real believable evidence that also in the skin layer uh, can reverse aspects of aging as well and including improve hair growth. 